Hello, thanks for joining me again. It's been a little while since my last video, so it's good to be back. This is the weekly chart of the S&P 500 futures. Um, and I'd like to just um, bring this little part of the chart to your notice. Um, price pulled back pretty sharply initially in here off of these highs. Uh, if we mark the low of this bar, you can see this bar was clearly the breakdown bar uh, on the weekly chart. But um, this bar here on quite high volume, the highest volume for, for quite some time. It sliced lower but recovered, sort of like a shakeout or um, stopping volume perhaps. In the, and the next bar, still on pretty high volume, traded mostly within the range of that bar, closed a little bit lower, but um, it wasn't particularly threatening as a weekly bar. It was clearly had a, a higher low than the previous bar, so it didn't threaten the lows of the bar at all. And then the next bar closed a little bit higher than the previous bar's lows, uh, it traded completely within the range of the previous bar. Volume eased a little bit, but um, it was a fraction above average. And the next bar in response, still on a pretty reasonable volume, uh, closed right back at the highs of the range. And um, this looks a lot like a reaccumulation zone, an ordered, organized reaccumulation. Now, this bar here popped out the top as a breakout bar, a breakout from. Let's clear that off. If we, um, we draw a line across there, this was clearly a breakout above this range. Now I'm saying this is a reaccumulation of some sort. You've got the previous highs here. Now price was never able to get back above them. Instead, price has come back and in some fashions tested the breakout. Some of these extended, exaggerated ranges at the moment are making life a little difficult for analysis. You've got to keep putting things into context and reminding yourself that the, the news flow out of the US in particular, with the difficulties the president's having with the mainstream media are causing some really exaggerated ranges. It's probably being celebrated by the market professionals in the US, they're probably having a wow of a time. But um, it's making the analysis a little bit more difficult. And then you'll find this sort of trading is reflected in the local markets around the world and their sectors. Most markets are showing more exaggerated ranges than they would normally, particularly in the daily charts. So anyway, the next bar traded with a really, um, a really wider spread uh, long tails on these bars, which is uh, a little more unusual for a, a test of a breakout, where you, where you would normally see the bottoms of the bar just touching the breakout line. But instead, we've got these really exaggerated ranges for whatever reason. Both bars closed above, back above the breakout line. And we'll see what happens this week. This week's um, incomplete, obviously. Not even any volumes come through for it yet. Now we switch to the daily chart. We'll work our way from one side to the other. We're showing 80 bars of the daily chart. There's a little mini breakdown with this bar here. Now I say mini because if we look at this as a little range, a little sideways range, this bar here was the one that broke down from that range. The broader range, this whole range here, we'll probably have a low mark here, and this was your breakdown bar. It was a little convoluted, the market didn't really want to go down by the looks. We mark that again just to make it a little bit more clear. This was a little breakdown bar closed in the middle on pretty good volume down here. This bar here broke down below the lows of the range. 
Uh, but the next bar, instead of really confirming it definitively, saw a narrowing of the spread, closed nearly in the middle, and still pretty high volume. So you would have still been a little unsure whether it was going to reverse and have some sort of, whether it would reverse and show some sort of bar that looked more like this. And the market's always full of questions. This bar was obviously a serious breakdown bar. Like it confirmed the big breakdown. I'll put in that line again. This was the initial bar. This was the uncertain bar, but being a down bar, closing clearly below the low of this bar, it did indicate there was weakness around for sure, and it was going to be difficult to recover if it did. Um, now, this bar, this bar, and this bar, all on pretty high volume. Look at this. All threatened to break down. I bet the news was bad each time those bars came in. Um, there would have been a bad gut feeling across the market. But look at the response each time. These are daily bars. Look at the response the next day. Every day closed higher, but every day also initially dipped below the low of the previous bar. Now, the first two bars in particular saw two following days higher. In fact, three following days higher. Now, and the volumes were high here, high but then lower here, average and then lower here. Now, what's this all saying to us? Let's have a look again. Now, here's your threatening bars that looked like they were going to cause a breakdown. My thoughts here are this was a buy the offer, force the market down on a bad news, and then each time the market threatened to break down, looked like it was going to initially, and then the whole offer was bought here, here, and here. Now, for me, this is some form of organized accumulation. Here was the low of the funny looking breakdown bar we had showing you where resistance was. In fact, this little narrow spread bar here, closed in the middle, might even be a more exact line for it. It doesn't matter. In this, this was the zone where price had to break through to break out. This was your breakout zone. It's not always a clear uh, single line. It's usually some form of zone. Here was your breakout bar. Now, now back into the accumulation zone itself these were the threatening down bars and to my eye there's some sort of it's not very clear but there's some shape like that where there's a pressing nature to the upside it's not completely clear because this bar is lower than this bar and these two are very similar but I see a pressing nature to the upside anyway. And this looks like an organized accumulation with a breakout of the top. This whip soaring nature that you see where price goes up and down and up and down is to try to encourage anyone with a bad gut feeling in the market, particularly anyone over here that's um, in a losing position and remains holding, they may sell into a breakout. Um, and that would make it more difficult for price to actually break out and move higher. When there's an accumulation in place, um, they're trying to encourage anyone in this area to sell down here for a loss, and then they're not in the market anymore, and they're not going to sell into a breakout. Now, now price wasn't able to break out, or complete a breakout, it did a breakout here, it moved up to here, but it was never able to break out completely. Here was probably your breakout lines. Instead, price started to tip over and then broke down again here. Now this 
this here is an exaggerated pullback. It's sort of like a test of the breakout, testing this breakout to see how strong it is. Or I guess you could say it was like um, a mini double bottom, but it's not really a double bottom, but sort of a hybrid, who knows exactly. It's a little weird. These um, exaggerated movements in the market at the moment uh, are causing the analysis to be a little bit, bit more difficult. Um, but you have to keep putting it into context with what's happened in the past. See, this is not going to go away. If price traded below it with really widespread heavy volume, you'd say what was accumulated here was dumped. But uh, we haven't really seen that at all. And this bar over here, that looked like it was going to break down um, on pretty reasonable volume, once again, saw the, the next bar up. The next two bars up, um, you've probably got your line here, I'm guessing, um, estimating. Might have been fine tuned to this level in the end, but there's your new breakout level. And this for me is going to be a, is a test of the breakout, test of the breakout from over here. It's a deep test. It's a little unorthodox. It's not what you would normally see. Normally you would see a fairly shallow test where the price just touches the level, perhaps dips fractionally below the breakout zone and, and then responds almost immediately back up. This is almost like a, a hybrid secondary reaccumulation. It's all a bit weird, but just have to go with it. It's what we've got. Because price then dipped lower again here on still fairly high volume, but the next bar was up, the next bar was up, and then price has broken out above where I estimate the new breakout line is. And here's your new breakout bar, and well, this was just a single day, no volume yet, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens yet, what happens next. But this is what we've got so far, this is what we've got to work with. I think this is a reaccumulation, a, re a serious reaccumulation zone. The breakout here suggests it was successful. This is a retest of the breakout, a retest of the breakout, which is a bit weird and exaggerated in size, but it's what we've got. Okay, finally, can I just point out that um, this really large, um, this really large reaccumulation here and this little mini reaccumulation here, if they do prove to be correct, and we get the full response from a reaccumulation in the S&P 500, probably the world's biggest equity market, then we are gonna see some sort of serious response to the upside. I'm not saying I'm 100% correct at the moment. You can only really tell that in hindsight. This is how I'm reading it at the moment. And then if this works out, then equity is going to be strong for, for some time. Okay, I'll update it sometime in the future. Thanks for joining me. See ya.